Hi everyone, a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Back in Mexico, we said about doing a question and answers. Well, we're here in Australia again. It's beautiful summer day, and uh, I thought we'd do the Q&A that we promised to do. So uh, we've never done this before, so forgive us if it uh, doesn't go too well. Michelle's here to ask the questions. I'm here to answer them. So. Let's give it a go. Okay, Aussie Zach 88 he asked three questions. His first one is, what made you start your YouTube channel? Hey, Aussie Zach, always good to hear from you, buddy. I uh, love your comments on YouTube. And um, it's, it's a complicated story, I suppose, or a longish story, but I'll try and condense it down. I had a friend up in Queensland who was uh, into YouTube and he was encouraging me to get on and do a YouTube channel. And for some time, I really wasn't that interested. I had no, um, no desire to be on YouTube. And then we moved down to Melbourne for a while and I was looking for something to do and people had said to me about you know, sharing um, our cooking skills or my cooking skills on YouTube. And um, we just gave it a go as a little try and got hooked really. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the be all and end all of it. What's your all time favorite food? This one's often asked of me and it's, it's tricky. I really love a good Indian meal. I love good spicy food. So that's uh, always gonna be high up there. And I suppose my, my family would say, it's really quite sad, but the simplest thing is actually bangers, mash and tin tomatoes. So I'm ashamed to say it. No, I'm not ashamed. It's a really good meal, but it's a comfort food. And then he asks, what do you think made you get sick? It's another one from Zach, is it? It is another one from Zach. <laughs> Uh, this is um, when I was in Mexico, I think, uh, you're talking about, Zach. I was pretty poorly, uh, but it was actually an extension of the, an illness that I got in Cambodia, and I was pretty weak. And uh, when we were first arrived in Mexico, I was just about getting over it, and I met, <laughs> I met a, 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 an Australian traveller. Uh, a lad that uh, was heaps of heaps of fun, but uh, I think I caught a bug off of him as well. So if he's watching, you know who you are. Film Nerden, he's asked quite a long question. He says, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned on your previous videos that you've done this type of travel before. What part of the world that you have, have or might think of going to visit on this trip have you done the least amount of recipes from in your cooking videos? Also, are you coming over to Europe on this trip? Okay. There's a few questions there and uh, we're, we're doing this blind. I, I don't know the questions that are coming. So if I understand that rightly, Film Nerd, and I remember the question, you're asking which countries, I'll answer the question basically. Uh, I think one of the places that I've done very little filming on is Mexico and I love Mexican food. Uh, so that's one country that we went to that I was inspired to go to because of learning about the food. And we will be sharing um, quite a lot uh, to do with the Mexican recipes that we discovered whilst we were in Mexico. Um, there's been many, many other countries that I've been to which I probably haven't covered that well on the channel and uh, we'll be doing more of those in the near future. And are we coming to Europe? Absolutely we're coming to Europe, but uh, I'm not sure when and I'm not sure in what capacity, so uh, keep them peeled. The Andrigan asks, are you coming to the Faroe Islands? I've had this invitation to come to the Faroe Islands from you before and uh, I would love to come to the Faroe Islands. I mean, it looks just absolutely beautiful, but it's a, it's a long way out and I'm not sure what I could do if I came there. Absolutely, I would love to come to the Faroe Islands, but probably I need some sort of reason or agenda or itinerary to come there for. So uh, if you come up with anything, let me know. Okay, there's three uh, subscribers that have asked th about this question and it's something you alluded to in Mexico. J. Mary Lestone, Marie Salvino and Easy Gluten Free have all asked what happened, what happened, please share, what happened at your lowest, dear Steve? Right, this was also, we'd been uh, in Mexico, I've been really quite poorly and we could barely walk a block and we decided to head down to the coast. Uh, for a bit of recuperation, a bit of a respite. Well, we took what was basically a luxury coach or advertised as a luxury coach uh, from Mexico City down to Puerto Escondido. And we were woken three or four hours before arriving at our destination in the early hours of the morning in a little one horse town in the middle of Mexico, had no idea where we were. Nobody really spoke very good English and our Mexican is not great. And um, yeah, we were basically told to get off the bus and, and make our own way. So we were sort of uh, uh, argued with them for some time about uh, this, that and the other and eventually got some other bus company 
to take us to Porto Escondido. We'd only been an hour or so outside of this little town up in the uh, windy mountains of uh, the, the Mexican jungle, or lush vegetation anyway, when that bus just stopped in a queue of traffic and there was some demonstration and then basically we, we realized that we were going nowhere. Now I felt absolutely uh, wretched at the time. We had to get all our bags and, and equipment and camera gear out of the bus and we had to walk up through the jungle roads past all the blockades uh, to a small village and there we had to negotiate uh, to try and get a, a minibus to take us the rest of the way. I had a, a Mexican guy that was with us whose uh, I think 80 year old mother was uh, very, very sick and we virtually had to carry her up the mountain. It was uh, a little frightening. We'd heard a lot about bandits and things and, and uh, it was um, quite concerning. It was interesting, but anyway, it's a shame I didn't film some of it, but at the time it was more stressful than you can imagine. So uh, yeah, that's what happened. So Mary Ugas asks, when are you heading back home? Well, I hope we got the name right, Mary. Um, U-G-U-Z. Mary's often on the channel commenting. Um, we are back home at the moment. This is not actually uh, back home as we know it. Uh, this is more just for a, a bit of a visit and to spend the holidays with the family. And uh, we will still be traveling throughout 2016, going to a lot of great places, so keep them peeled. I'm not <laughs> entirely sure where at the moment, but we'll be definitely back in the USA and I suspect Europe as well. Catherine P has asked, where will you go after Mexico and have you planned to go to Europe one day? Ah, now Catherine, we've done the Europe thing. Um, after Mexico, we decided to head up to the USA and visit some friends and I've put some videos up already about that. We had a fantastic time in Mexico. It is a beautiful country. The last city we were in was Mexico City and then we headed up to Philadelphia. So you can see that on the channel already, I hope. Uh, Joseph says, what are your greatest strengths and weaknesses? Hey Joseph, how are you? Um, I suppose my, my greatest strengths are, if I have any at all, <laughs> is knowing my weaknesses. So um, trying to uh, not become uh, such a perfectionist. I've always been a perfectionist. It's not the, the greatest way to be, to be honest. So I suppose my greatest strengths are to know my weaknesses. And my greatest weaknesses are probably just being too much of a perfectionist. Uh, and I try to work on that constantly. So this is from Anne at Easy Gluten Free and she wants to know who George is. George. Jorge, the Mexican name. George was a guy who walked past us on a video when we were in Mexico. And uh, Jorge is a lovely guy. He was a host that we were staying in Porto Escondido. And uh, he is recently married to a Polish girl, I think, yeah? Okay. So, um, and they are moving. She lives in the USA, and I think he's moving up to the USA. So, best of luck, George. And uh, you were a fantastic host, lots of fun. Thank you for showing me around the markets. Iximus asks, what's the weirdest thing you've eaten? Oh, I've eaten a lot of uh, strange things, I suppose, to some people. I've eaten uh, snails and frog's legs and horse and, sorry about the horse. Um, suppose the easy option would be to say that 100-year-old um, egg in Thailand. And uh, that video went up just before. That was pretty, pretty rank. I didn't enjoy it, but I would try it again and pretty adventurous. Um, apart from that, no, nope, I think that'll do. So those questions all came from YouTube. We've now got a couple from Facebook. David A. Thurmond says, are you and the missus doing okay traveling around the US and Mexico? Kind of hard to keep up with you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful time. Enjoy life, it's too short. Hey David, life is too short, although it is fun as well. And uh, I always love to have your comments. You're a great supporter of the channel. Um, we are very well, thank you very much. And um, yeah, it can be a little difficult keeping up with us because sometimes we film things uh, that I think I'll put up fairly quickly and it takes me a while to get them edited. We are in Australia at the moment and um, we'll be heading somewhere interesting soon. So keep them peeled. So this question is asked by two people, Gloria Cavins McKenzie and Clara KT. They want to hear the story of how you got started cooking and ended up making videos on YouTube and how this experience has changed your life. 
Okay, cooking and me go back a, a long way. Uh, Michelle is a chef also, and um, we have been into food for as long as I can remember. We've traveled all around the world, and at one time we had our own little small holding, a little farm in France, and we used to produce all our own meats and vegetables and grow everything, so we were passionate about that, and we started sharing that with people. And how has it affected us being on YouTube? Well, I'm not sure it's affected us that greatly, although I have found a fantastic uh, community of people which I love on YouTube, and uh, it's been a great bonus. So uh, thank you very much. And the last question is from Peter Morland. He wants to know, what is your next move? Hey, Peter. Um, <laughs> sometimes I think you guys might know my next move before I do. Uh, we are thinking of spending a bit more time. We're going to travel again through 2016, but we're going to spend more time in single places so that we can film more food experiences for you and share with you. So um, look out for an announcement soon as to where we're going. And um, we will certainly be back in the USA. And if anyone is going to be at VidCon, we will be there in is it June. June, we will be in VidCon and uh, spending a month or so in the USA. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. So maybe we'll get a chance to meet. I hope so. Okay, well, thank you very much for posing your questions. Uh, if we start getting questions again, I'll maybe start keeping them on a list and at a later date we'll do another Q&A maybe from somewhere else in the world. Thank you very much for joining us here on this beautiful Australian summer day. I know it's winter in a lot of places, so uh, I hope you're not too jealous. Um, be good. I'll leave a link up here to some other videos, by the way. Subscribe to the channel and comment down below. Don't forget, I love to hear what you have to say. Take care. <laughs> you didn't do it at that time, but you did, didn't you? Yeah. This is the second time we filmed this. <laughs> and a lot of it is to do with just having the sound right, so I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, it is tricky. I've got to have uh, hats off to all those people that uh, do this on a regular basis. So turn all the many sounds off. <laughs>